sunshine friends we are back and we're going to be mixing a sober highball for you today a non-alcoholic highball in celebration of our Hemingway and highballs kind of video that we're doing and obviously we're not going to be preparing this highball the way that Hemingway did but uh, we're going to be preparing it in a way you can enjoy that doesn't have any alcohol in it for this drink you're going to need a ginger ale some seed lip spice, a lime, and some ice cubes. What is wrong with the ice cubes? Um, they're magical rainbow unicorns, sir. That's ridiculous. Well, I can see that you've already sampled one right here. So, they must be okay. First, you want to put your ice in, and it doesn't have to be... Let's get a shot of those magical rainbow unicorns if we could. Do you hold a magical unicorn up for me? So, so everyone can see how magical... Oh, the other other way. Other way. That's a magical unicorn. Wow. Okay. And just put them in there. And then you are going to add two ounces of seed lip spice. And we have little two ounce glasses that we use to measure because we do not have fancy, fancy measuring stuff. And you don't have to either. So... Here we go, pouring in that seed lip spice. Here it goes. Oh, here it goes. Oh, your hands are so nice and juicy. Oh, look at that. The rainbow unicorns are really adding some pizzazz. Well, how do we make the, rain the rainbow ice? Rainbow what did, ice. What did we do? We uh, took water and we put a drop of food color <laughs> into the water that was in the ice cube. The ice cube dish. So that's what we did. And here is the ginger ale. Somebody has been snacking on the ginger ale. There you go. Just pour that ginger ale in. And that is how easy it is and how magical it looks. Look how magical that looks. That's so magical looking. Can you believe how magical looking it is? Oh my gosh. Get a shot of that magical rainbow unicorn. Now this is a spiced ginger highball using seed lip spice. This one is red because there's a red magical rainbow unicorn in there. That's really jazzes things up. Alright, it's time for our magical drinks. Let's take a look at all that magical beauty in that drink right there. And uh, are you ready? Down, down the hatch, I suppose. Yes. So. <laughs> to Hemingway. To Hemingway, yes. All right. Mmm. That's good. The seed lip spice adds like a real nice zest to it. Now we are just at the foot of Mount Kilimanjaro. Right, that right. Be perfect. Perfect. So, <laughs> and then we're gonna show you some video from our uh, trip to Petoskey, which is where Hemingway spent the first twenty-two summers of his life. So, enjoy. <laughs> Trying to avoid interdimensional overlords, Soviet vampires, and other interested parties can really take a toll on your creativity. So Scratch elected that we time hop to Petoskey, Michigan. Technically, we're in Bayview, which is right outside Petoskey at the Terrace Inn. But Petoskey is the city where Ernest Hemingway spent his first 22 summers in a cabin overlooking Walloon Lake. That's actually Scratch right there, not Hemingway, in case you couldn't tell. And if you're lucky enough to stay at the Terrace Inn, you might just find yourself in the Hemingway Room. Now, Hemingway never actually slept here, but he would have. The room is dedicated to Hemingway's love of writing, the outdoors, and the overall Northern Michigan experience. That's a little baby Hemingway right there. So cute. City Park Grill is actually one of Petoskey's oldest buildings, constructed in 1875 in Hemingway's time. See that picture up in the corner? That's Hemingway. He used to sit at the second seat to the end of the bar and write down his story ideas. Back then it was called the Annex, which he mentions by name in his short story, Gentlemen of the World. It wouldn't get the name City Park Grill till 1997, when the menu was also changed to reflect more of a home style from scratch type, oh, there's scratch right now, eating some bread. Ooh, I like that sconce. Nice hat. We enjoyed some fresh fish, which is a must when you're in Michigan, and a fresh fruit crumble with some homemade ice cream. Outside, you'll find a statue of Hemingway himself, and uh, somebody put flower petals in his eyeballs, which is a little creepy, but he'd probably think it was funny. 
Many of the storefronts that you'll find downtown are actually set up to reflect the early 1900s, the period of time in which Hemingway would have been in the area. Another spot you want to check out downtown is Ernesto's. Now this is kind of a hidden gem. When you look at the building from the outside, it seems like kind of a quaint, modern little establishment, maybe a cozy little cigar bar. But when you go downstairs, no, it is a fully stocked humidor with a full scale bar and live music. It's kind of a phenomenon. A band playing right now, these are the Crosscut Kings and they're phenomenal. We actually picked up their CD. Now, as you may know, Ernest Hemingway had a very deep connection with the sea and uh, what you're seeing right here, that blue thing, that is not the sea. It is a big blue wet thing, but it is in fact northern Lake Michigan, and that ship you're looking at, that is the tall ship Manitou. It is a replica of an 1800s coasting cargo ship, and uh, yes, that is a fully functional ship, and I don't know since this is a lake if we are heading out to sea, or we are heading out to lake, or what the proper terminology is, but it is a fully functional ship. That is correct, and all the passengers get the opportunity, if they want it, to hoist the sails and participate in all the fun sailory type things that your adventurous little heart might crave. Or it might not. You can sit down and just watch. And of course, Scratch, being the rugged individualist that he obviously is, he helped right here. They are lifting up the sails and Back in the day, I would have known the terminology for this, and uh, I don't right now. But uh, wow, look at him go. Yeah, they do this every day. This crew is fully certified, fully sail certified, and uh, this ship actually is sailing under wind power. Here we are. We're just kind of enjoying the ride at this point, coasting as you do on a coasting cargo ship. Oh, look, there's a sailboat. Hi. That's, that's nice. And uh, yeah, the water is very nice today. It's a very pleasant summery day for yeah. Michigan. Yeah, it's, I, I found it cold, but uh, I have a basking temperature of like, you know, 80. Which is probably why the transition to HE double hockey stick uh, wasn't such a big deal for me. Yeah, listen to Creeping Wave Radio for the details on that. Oh, careful, don't fall. Now, this crew member is actually going up aloft to help unfurl or actually to refurl the sail. They are furling the sail because uh, we don't need it right now. Oh, there's another sailboat. That one's real pretty. Hi. Hey there, sailboat. How's it going? Hi. Looking good. Oh, hey, you're looking good too there, sir. And uh, now it's time to sort of batten down the hatches, I guess, or well, basically we're, we're coming in towards the shore. We're bringing the sails down. And uh, we're getting ready basically to put the ship to bed. Here we go. And yeah, his sails are coming down and they are wrapping them up. And there goes the mooring line. And with that, our Petoskey adventure comes to an end. There is a very special thanks coming out to Jan Neff Sinclair. She's a feisty young Patreon, the newest of the bunch. There's Neil, he's the warrior of the group. And there's Nikki Benfield. He's, he's kind of like the cleric, I think. And the Gramerica show. They're, they're definitely chaotic something. Which I mean in a good way, if you don't understand the D&D &D reference, which I just barely do. I haven't played since high school, but I know my fan base is, you know, those kind of people. Which I also mean in a good way. You know what? You can just go to patreon.com slash lucidnap and tell me what I should be saying. That would be great. And uh, thank you for following our progress or for hate watching us. Either is good, <laughs> seriously. Because as far as we're concerned over here in the studio, a view is a view. Yes. And uh, we're just trying to build a healthy, mighty, strong, and hearty channel so that when we do come back with Creeping Wave Radio and all the other things, then uh, yeah. Or you could go to luc thelucidnap.com. That's my website. And check out our progress there if I update it. You know what? Talk to you later. Bye. I'll go update it, maybe. 
Life in Hiatus is brought to you by the Lucid Nap Productions in cooperation with the hairy old man, and he has horns too, and other things that I don't feel comfortable talking about, but it gets weird. 